those, those of you that don't know me, I'm just a little whiny baby. <laughs> I love God so very much, and I'm so honored to be here. I'm so honored to be up here. I'm so honored to be able to give forth the word of God and that he thought me worthy Amen. to do that. Because your souls are precious to him. Your life is very precious to him. And so he doesn't put just anybody in front of you to, to, to speak a word into your life. And if they're not speaking good stuff to you, you need to get out of there quickly. If they're, not, if they're putting you down and they're, and, they're, and, they're, and, they're, and they're making you feel heavier than what you should feel, there's something wrong with that. There's something wrong. And you need to understand that and begin to put yourself in a place where God can feed you yeah. and where God can empower you to be the man and woman of God that he called you to be. Amen. Because he put gifts and talents and abilities on the inside of you. Right. And he wants to pull that out of you so that he would get glory out of your life. Right. And so that you would become everything that you want. Yes. Um, and so, you know, it's an honor. And I, I just begin to think about the goodness of God this morning, and oh my goodness, I begin to get righteously angry because people are mad at him, yeah. and it's unjustly. Amen. They've never stopped and looked at their, their own choices and their own life and the, and the situations, and they've never stopped and really stopped and thought about how he took them out and delivered them, how they could not be here on this earth today because of his wonderful and merciful and good hand. He's so amazing. And if we really would stop and see the goodness of God, oh my goodness, <laughs> you would be, you would worship like you've never worshiped before. You would fall on your face and just thank God for his wonderful, mighty hand over our lives. He, he's over our lives even when we're not connected to him. And we've turned our back and we've gone another direction, but yet he covers us yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. with his amazing love. Yeah. And I'm just, so I just, so I get overwhelmed with how much he loves us and how much I've learned to love him, yes. you know. So I'm going to sing a short song because I, I had it in my spirit. And I want you to, to listen to it, and not so much sing with me because some of you know it, but I want you to listen to the words. There's so many times that we, we, we hear the beat of a song, and we clap our hands, and we get involved in the song, but we don't hear the words of the song. And I remember how irritated I used to be when I used to hear rap music, and because I'm really into words, um, and so... I want words to come out of my mouth that empower something. I don't want words to just, you know. And so even though it used to be gospel music, I couldn't understand what they were saying because they were talking too fast. And it would always amaze me how my sons could say, oh, mom, they were just saying this, 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 and that, and the other. I'm like, what? How did you hear that? So I thought that was really amazing. Um, uh, so long as they heard the words, <laughs> that's all that mattered to me. I already had songs that I enjoyed anyway. So, uh, But I, I, I believe in the words of a song. And then you have to be careful what you're singing and what you're allowing to let come out of your mouth. That it be words of faith and words of empowerment and not just words uh, that will defeat and, and sadden you and bring you to a place of heaviness instead of joy. Okay. Um, Carrie, uh, Carrie Job uh, blessed me with this song, and, and every now and then I, it, I just wake up with it. And tonight, of all times, the Lord just brought it to my heart. And, and so it goes like this. It's, the more I seek you, the more I find you. The more I find you, the more I love you. The more I seek you, the more I find you. 
the more I find you, the more I love you. I want to sit at your feet and drink from the cup in your hands. Lay back against you and breathe and feel your heart beat. This love is so deep. It's more than I can stand. I melt in your peace. It's overwhelming. I want to sit at your feet. Drink from the cup in your hands. Lay back against you and breathe. And feel your heart beat. I want to sit at your feet. And drink from the cup in your hands. Lay back against you and breathe. Feel your heart beat. Cause your love is so deep. It's more than I can stand. I melt in your peace. It's overwhelming. The one thing I want to teach everybody in this congregation at LifePoint Christian Faith Center is there's such an intimacy to God that we fail to press into. We make it so mechanical. And so, you know, we just go through emotions. And um, it's more about the fear of going to hell than it is about to just the love and the enjoyment of being in his presence. I want to get this right so I, so I don't go to hell. But it should be more about, I just want to, I just want to be in his presence. I just want to love him and I want to, I want to learn more about him. And that's what Wednesday nights are about. It's, it's, it's about learning and taking our time and getting into the presence of God and getting a full understanding of how awesome and amazing he is and how much he loves you and how much we have to press into his love. And, and so I want, you to, I want you to get a lot out of the fruit of the spirit because there's so much in it. And the more I study it, the more I find. So the more I seek him, the more I find him. And the more I find him, the more I just fall in love with him all over again, all over again, all over again. And I see depths and, 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 and the vastness of who he is, and I'm just like, I'm overwhelmed. But yet I laugh and I dance and I joy in his presence because it's so amazing. So I want to be a little contagious tonight. I want to be a little, I want to affect you yes. with that love and that passion and that amazingness of God. Mm-hmm. It's, not, it's not fake and it's not phony. It's, it's so real and it's so amazing. Amen. So those of you that were not here uh, last week, we talked about the opposite attributes of the fruit of the Spirit. And uh, so we'll review just a little bit. Uh, we talked about the bad stuff. <laughs> And these are the things that keep us struggling in our faith and in darkness, where we are not in the light of Christ, but we are in darkness, and we don't even realize it, because that's just how good Satan is. He makes it look fun, and he, and he makes it look amazing until we really get into the thick of it, and where he's dragged us out so far, we don't even know how to get in, but to call on the name of Jesus. And, but guess what? As soon as you do, he's right there. That's, 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 that's our God. That's how amazing and, and, and wonderful he is. Galatians 5, uh, we've been studying out of Galatians 5, uh, 28 uh, through 20, 
5, um, but we're going to go to 21, and we're going to talk just a little bit about it, not, not much at all. Verse 18 says, it says, but if you are led by the Spirit, Galatians 5, 18, if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. What law is that? That's right. Romans 8 and 2, write it down if you need to study it, if you need to look it up. Romans 8 and 2 so it says, for the law of the life in Christ and Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. Remember that. Whenever Satan tries to tell you you're still in sin and you're still full of it and all that good stuff, he's a liar. You are walking in the life of Christ, in Christ Jesus. You are walking in the life of the Spirit, okay? Verse 19 says, now the works of the flesh are, and they're very evident, which are adultery, fornication. We, we define all those. If you, if you don't know all of them, uh, please pick up the, C, uh, the CD. Uh, you can always sign up for a CD at the Welcome Center out in the, out in the Gathering Point area. Um, now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murderers, drunkenness, rivalries, and the like. That's a lot of stuff. Some are more serious than others. Some, some we, we actually fall into probably every day at least the temptation <laughs> to do it, okay? Some of us, you know, that, that, that contentions, I had contention almost today with somebody on the phone. <laughs> I was trying to get something done, and it was like, you're, you're causing me to be in contention. Okay, stop it. Um, outbursts of wrath, I could have ended up that way <laughs> with an outburst of wrath. Selfish ambitions, you know, you just, you know, come on. Um, we're, we're normal, we're human. And uh, we have ambitions that are for us. And um, just as long as they don't get in the way with what God wants us to do, uh, we have to learn sometimes that God comes first. I'm sorry. We have to learn all the time that God comes first. <laughs> I said that wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, uh, so selfish ambitions, dis uh, dissensions, uh, heresies, envy, and, uh, you know, most of us don't get into murder, you know. <laughs> we don't get into that too much. Um, yeah, yeah. And so, you know, the temptations of adultery and fornication, they're always out there. Um, uncleanness, you know, Christ has made us clean with the blood of Jesus, and hopefully we always stay clean. How do we stay clean? Hey, y'all remember? No? By the washing? By the washing of the water of the word. That's how we stay clean. Because we, then the word begins to get in the inside of us. It begins to show us what we're supposed to be like, how we're supposed to walk, what we're supposed to do. And, and then the Holy Spirit teaches us how to do that successfully because he is our teacher. Okay. All right. So verse 21 says, the half, half okay, I'll just say, envy, murders, drunkenness, rivalries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand. Paul was telling them beforehand, he was telling them, hey, guys, y'all got to stay out of this stuff. Y'all got to stay clear, stay clear. He warns us. God warns us. He's always trying to warn us and tell us what we shouldn't do. He's always telling us, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't react like that. You know, let it go. Let it go. He's always telling us, always. And just as I also told you in time past, he was even telling them way back when, telling them, hey, guys, don't do it, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So the important thing there is to always be careful, to always be walking in the spirit, and to always keep the word of God pumping in your life, always having something to meditate upon so that you can always um, be close to him and his presence all, is always there and it's always going to tell you when you're doing wrong. And the, the next thing is to what? If he's telling you, what do you need to do? Be obedient. Don't do it. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, Ephesians 6 and 12. Let's look at that real quick. Ephesians 6 and 12. It says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Um, I, know, I, I try to teach this like I'm talking to a lot of people that don't really understand a lot of things about the Bible. And um, when we talk about heavenly places, it makes it sound like, because if, if you only think that heaven is where God is, and that's the only heaven there is, then you probably will think that, what do you mean, wickedness in heavenly places? That doesn't make sense. But there are three levels of heaven. Is that correct, Pastor Tommy? Yes. And, um, and so there is a, a, a realm in which uh, wickedness and spiritual wickedness is, 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 it reigns and it kind of is. And, and so uh, we're working on getting that out of the earth. And guess how we do that? We do that by our lives being a light to the world and bringing more and more people to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And that's how we do that. Um, but we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. A lot of times you think these things just pop into your head because, oh, you know, that's just life. No, uh, Satan's probably been watching you since you were a little kid, watching your buttons and watch what, 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 what makes you mad, what, make, what makes you weak, what makes you this and makes you that. And he, he just knows your nature. He knows what, what, what to push. And so he's going to put, if, if, if say uh, women are a are, 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 weakness for a man. <laughs> um, and uh, you don't think that, that, that Satan would put an a, a attractive woman in front of your face? But you've got to realize who it is. Yeah. And when you begin to, to realize who it is, then you can take authority over that. Mm-hmm. And you can begin, and you've got, to know, you've got to know scripture. It is the washing of the water of the word that makes us clean. And so we, 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 we know scripture, we know him, we know that he's with us, he, he empowers us to be able to do the things that we need to do, so we begin to say the scriptures. We begin to say and take authority over that thought, because right now it's a thought, right? It's not an action, it's just a thought. So we take authority over that and we begin to walk the other way. And a lot of people say, it's not that simple. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. But you have to practice it. You have to practice it. Do it. Begin to do it. And begin to say, no, walk the other way. No, walk the other way. And you just begin to do that. You're not wrestling against flesh and blood. You're not wrestling against that female. You're not wrestling when somebody makes you angry and you want to have a fit of wrath or a fit of anger. You're not wrestling against that. You're wrestling against the spirit inside that person trying to, trying to intimidate you or begin to attack you. And so you have to take authority over that. I know who you are, and I know what that's about. So you know what? I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not going to argue with you. We're going to go in the other direction. I'm not, I'm not going there. As a matter of fact, love covers a multitude of sin. As somebody say amen. 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 It really does. Love, once love starts flowing and coming out, oh my goodness, they don't even know how to act because it's the enemy of your soul that is messing with you. It's not that person just being contentious and being, uh, uh, trying to get under your skin. It's not about that, okay? So just remember who you wrestle with and begin to recognize that and, and begin to take authority over that. All right, let's go, let's go to the good stuff. I like the good stuff. <laughs> it's all good. Because you know what? It, it teaches us how to do this thing. It teaches us how to be successful in our walk with God. And that's a good thing. Um, but these things are, are, are hard, too, for some of us. Okay? Uh, and I would dare say at the beginning for all of us. 
okay? Galatians 5, 22 through 25. Are we ready? Yes, 22. They're quick back there. All right. Do y'all have it? All right. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. It's joy. Peace. Long-suffering, in the, in the New King James ver- Version, but also patience. Uh, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. There are nine of them, if you don't know. There are nine fruit of the Spirit. There are nine fruit, okay? I said that before, that it's not fruits per- plural. For the Holy Spirit is one spirit, and it is his attributes, and so it is, it is, it is the fruit of the Spirit of the Lord, okay? So it's not the fruits of the Spirit, it's the fruit of the Spirit, all right? All right, let's get into love. Um, I'm only going to go over these because we are going to talk about each one of them in depth, and, uh, and I want you to... Um, be prepared for that. Um, God's given some wonderful insight into the fruit and, and how everything that he teaches on a Wednesday night is to bring you to a higher and a better place and to a stronger place. And, um, and so I'm just going to glaze over them just a little bit and uh, get, give you a little bit of an understanding of each one. And then we're going to just talk a little bit and then we can go home. <laughs> All right. Love. God is love. God is love. When we have love, we are shining God wherever we go. You are the light of the world. You are radiating when you are loving in the right and proper way. You radiate God. I love... um, well, I'll, I'll keep going because I'll get ahead of myself. Okay. <laughs> we bring smiles on people's faces and peace to a room of darkness. We are carriers of God. He, he, he embodies us. He literally lives and abides on the inside of us. And I know a lot of times we don't feel it, but it's not about what you feel. It's about what you know. And so you've got to know God. And when you know him, it doesn't matter what your feelings are, what you see, what's going on around you. It does not matter because I know that I know that I know God. And so, um, all right. Let me, let me, let me, let me. And when you've seen, okay, I love, I love what, um, we're carriers of God. And so I love what Jesus said when they asked, asked him about, when the disciples asked him about God. And they, he says, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Right. When you've seen me, you've seen the Father. That should be all of us. That should be all of us. When we walk into a room, when we, when we handle situations, when we do all of that, they should be looking at the Father. They should look at the very... Um, essence of the spirit of the living God. And, and, and that's, what we're, that's what we endeavor to do on a daily basis. That's what we endeavor to do. When you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Um, I used to love it. Well, I didn't love it at the time. I hated it. But now I think it, of it as, as such a huge honor. Uh, when we used to go to our last church in Texas, uh, there was a, a, one of the ushers that used to come... Every time I walked in the, in the sanctuary, and I was getting ready, we had to sit up front because we were the youth pastors, and, and so we had to sit up front, and, we, and I have to come down this aisle, and he always ushered where we sat. And so he would always say, loudly, mind you, and here comes Jesus. I was so embarrassed the first time he did that, and the second time he did that, and the third time he did that. I mean, he would just do it every time I came in. And I mean, he, after I told him, hey, could you do that a little lighter? A little, little, not so, not so loud. 
I, he was fine. He did that. And, um, but he would, he would always tell me that every time I walked in. And, and like, you know, you get this humbleness. <laughs> and you're like, oh, no, no, no. I'm not like Jesus. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not that. No, no. Yes, you are. You yes, you are. That is an honor for somebody to say, here comes Jesus. <laughs> Because they see something in your life that represents Christ, and that, that's so cool. That's so cool. All right. Uh, it is. Joy. <laughs> Joy is our strength. Have you ever felt when you didn't have joy and when you felt heavy and you felt sad? How did it feel? Heavy. Oh my goodness, I felt like I could just lay in bed all day long. I can't get up. I can't walk. I can't talk. I can't do nothing. But if I could just get a smile on my face. And all I had to do was turn this mouth, the sides of this cheek, this way, and turn it up. I can't tell you the difference that it made in my life. I want you to try it tomorrow. Try it tonight, whenever, okay? Try it. I'm serious. If you feel like heavy, all of a sudden just smile and see how you feel. It's like, it's like the heaviness goes, whoo. I'm like, hey, I want to smile all the time. All right. Laughter is physically known to release endorphins and to your system that brings wellness to our bodies. How, how about that? And I didn't even know that when it first started happening. I didn't know. I mean, I just did it because I knew joy was my strength. It made me feel better quickly. And I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to keep doing that. I'm going to keep doing that. But then to find out that God actually made our bodies to do that. He literally and physically made endorphins, but based upon our joy, to actually make us better and well. What is that? That's God. That is God. God made us that way. We are his creation. He made us to be healed. I mean, come on, we can scratch ourselves, and all of a sudden our bodies just know exactly what to do to heal it. It's like, wow, that's amazing. <laughs> I mean, I just, I don't know. I don't know about you, but I'm amazed about all that stuff. I mean, it's just, I just, I love it. So, we have in ourselves the ability through the joy of the Lord to actually make ourselves well and better and lighter. And it's just, I, I encourage you to smile. <laughs> I encourage you to smile. All right. Peace. Peace is tranquility, serenity. S spiritually at peace transcends all understanding. I'm serious. It's a calm and a knowing of security in his presence. The only time that I can truly remember that kind of peace is when our daughter went to heaven. And everything around me seemed to begin to swirl and get way out of control. People were crying around me and things were going on. People were trying to touch me and I was like, no, because I'm not comprehending all this going on because I wasn't there. So there was no peace anywhere, anywhere at all in that, in that point in time. And the Lord told me, get away. And I felt like Jesus going to the mountain because everybody wanted to throng you, you know, everybody wanted to touch you, everybody wanted to hug you, everybody wanted to give you a word to bring you peace, and none of that worked. None of that worked. 
And I needed God. I didn't need any of them. And actually, I needed Tommy. <laughs> I needed Tommy, but I didn't have him at the time. And so the only one I knew to run to was God. And so I went to this room all by myself, and I just closed my eyes, and I told him I was very honest. I don't know what's going on here but you're going to have to explain something to me <laughs> because this wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> and so I tell you know, and, and so I could feel my heart beat a little harder because I was getting angry and I can't explain it to y'all. It's, it, it's past understanding. I can't even understand it myself. It's like a, 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 a presence just came all over me, and there was this peace. Oh, my goodness. I just, and it was like instantly I was focused in on him. Instantly. It was like, it's like he covered me, and he, he almost like, you know how you, you I do tell me because somebody else might not understand. <laughs> so I, he, he just grabbed my hand and, and like, look at me. Look at me. You know? He just, he just, he made me look at him. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and, and that's when he began to tell me, she, you know, she never knew one moment of pain. Not one moment of fear. I caught her in my arms. And to this day, I can't even get that saying out of my head and out of my heart because... He said it, and I heard him, and it brought such peace into the room and into my heart, and I just was like, wow. And I just, I just sat there, and, and he says, do you trust me? Yes. Yes, Lord, I trust you. And from that point on, I just walked with him because I... In my flesh, I could do nothing. You know, I needed him. And so, it's that kind of peace that he gives, you know. He says, my, my peace, I leave with you. I give it to you. And it's up to us to take it. It's up to us to, to really take it in. And not reject it and be angry and be, and be disappointed and, and all those things. I have to trust him with everything, even in the midst of that kind of turmoil. You know, so. And I had to know that he has all things in my life under control. And I had a sense of rest. There is a sense of rest in the, in the time of peace with the Father. All right, let's go to patience before I cry some more. All right. Patience. Long-suffering. <laughs> that sounds horrible, doesn't it? <laughs> Long-suffering. <laughs> and sometimes it can feel like that, but only if you choose to let it feel like that. Right. It does not have to be long-suffering. That's why I like patience better. It feels like it sometimes, mind you, especially at the beginning, at the beginning of your road of being patient and waiting upon the Lord. It, it feels like long suffering, but no, I'm going to be patient before God. It's a waiting with trust and joy. It's a waiting with trust and joy. When it's not, an, it's not an issue, but a wow, I can't wait. It's going to be great. <laughs> when you say, when it's, it, when it's not an issue, when I'm thinking about it every day with irritation, it's more like, I can't wait until this happens. Because you know it's coming. You know it's coming. So it's just like, I'm waiting. It's almost like Christmas. <laughs> you know it's coming, and you know it's going to be great because it's God. So you're just patient. I'm 
just patient. I'm just going to wait. And I'm going to trust him. And I'm going to have joy in my waiting. Okay? So that's patience. Kindness. I had a problem with kindness and goodness, so I had to sit and wait and meditate a little bit with God. I was like, God, you have to show me something here, Lord. Because they seem like they're the same, but he showed me a difference. So praise God. Kindness. Sensitive to the needs of others. Putting the needs of others above your own is an act or a doing more than an act of saying. You know, we can say we're going to do something and we don't do it. But when we do it, that's an act of kindness. That's kindness. It's a doing. It's a doing. Goodness. It is an inner attribute, attribute given by God, which is the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, right? It is an attribute that <coughs> radiates out of a person. It is not just an action. It is a quality seen in every part of their life. You see, a, a good person is just, you, they don't have to do anything. You just know it by everything that they are. They can say things that are just so good. <laughs> I mean, how did you think of that? I mean, how did you, what, what, you know, wow. I mean, it's just, even their home looks warm and, 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 you know, it's just, they're just good. I mean, it just, they radiate the goodness of God. Um, uh, it's words, wait a minute, I mean, through their interactions with others, you can tell through their interactions with others how they, how God is just in their life and moving in their life and, and through their life. The goodness of God is something that is seen on somebody. It is not just an action. It's seen. Gentleness. Gentleness is humble in spirit. A soft touch, whether in word or deed. There is power in gentleness. People want to say that uh, gentle men are weak. I say a gentle man is a gentleman. I tell you, there is nothing sweeter or more powerful than a gentleman. <laughs> uh, somebody that holds your door open and, and, uh, and, and just has sweet words and different things to say to you, it does not make them weak. It makes them strong especially in the eyes of those that are uh, receiving. So uh, gentleness can change nations and homes and marriages. Gentleness is powerful. Gentleness is powerful. Um, most of the time uh, we get uh, full of ourself <laughs> and we want to have our way and it's that gentle spirit that can ward off so much dissension and so much um, anger and wrath and, and all the things that want to come with that. But that gentle spirit is the thing that can have the power to change a whole situation. And, uh, and so uh, it's very much of God. Uh, it is not something that we can conjure up and make happen. It is the inner parts of who we are and the inner part of what, who God is. All right. Faithfulness. Faithfulness. Faithfulness is steadfast, immovable, dependable. What I have said, I will do. I'll say it again. <laughs> what I have said, I will do. That is so rare today. I'm just saying. 
It's rare today. People will drop their word in a hot second and say, I, I know what I said, but I, I can't come, I can't go, I can't something, and, and it's amazing, and will leave you high and dry. <laughs> uh, it is a God attribute to be able to be faithful, because um, we've, we've uh, adopted a, a saying here at LifePoint for the, uh, <clears throat> for the executive team members, for all the leadership here at LifePoint, don't do your best, do whatever it takes. Because that's faithfulness. Amen. That's faithfulness that I, if, if I, if I, I gotta give you, I gotta give you some kudos there, um, Ms. Coleman. I gotta, I gotta do it. Uh, this last uh, partner's class. <laughs> and the Lord, there, there were times when I wanted to come downstairs because I, got, I had a feeling that you were still here. And I said, and, and the Lord told me, nope, don't do it. Don't do it. And I'm so glad I didn't. Because what you showed was your faithfulness to get the job done, no matter what it takes Amen. to get it done. She was here all night long to do that new partner's class. <laughs> all night long. And she had worked that day. And she came back for the class and stayed all day. Come on. How many hours did you stay up? 37, probably more. Because she probably didn't go right home and go to sleep. So, I mean, that's crazy. And she came to church the next day. That's faithfulness. That's faithfulness. I tell you, that's, 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 that's great. I mean, that's from God. I mean, to, to give you that type of um, drive to do something beyond your limitations, physical limitations, beyond your um, uh, self-desire, and to do something beyond that, that's God. That is so God. I mean, that's, I mean, because that has to be the love of God that has to drive you and to begin to, to tell you to stay and get the job done. And not, not only that, but she got it done right. Come on. I mean, to stay up that late, you would think some stuff would be all turned around and crooked and and you know, all kinds of stuff wrong, but it wasn't, it wasn't like that at all. It was amazing, and uh, I definitely applaud her and thank her for the, the service that she did. Uh, it was great. It was amazing. Yeah, you can give her a hand clap. That would be great. I know you. <laughs> that was awesome. That was awesome. All right, the last one is self-control. Self-control. <laughs> That's funny. Um, Self-discipline. Self-restraint, willpower, level-headedness, and it's all by God. There's no way you can have any type of willpower at all unless God give it to you. There's no way that you can have any type of self-discipline unless you learn through the, through the unction of the Holy Spirit and being able to hear his voice and to walk by his word and to, to really understand the importance of who you are. And, and to, to, that in any given situation, such as gentleness, faithfulness, goodness, that you have enough self-control to stay there and do, get the job done. You have enough self-control to be able to, 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 to look away and to, and to do what you need to do and do the things that were right. That's amazing. I mean, that's a God-given attribute that only God can give you to really be able to do it with, with, uh, with the right results. Because uh, most of the time, if we do it in our own ability, there are some things we don't have self-control in. Uh, but with God, we can have self-control in everything, everything that we do, so that, so that in every situation, we know how to handle it. 
We know, how to, we know how to rein it in. We know how to control the atmosphere, control the situation, and we know how to do that because we can do it only in his ability and not our own. But most people, they may have self-control in some things, but they don't have self-control in everything. There, there's certain things you can have willpower in. Oh, I have willpower to not eat. Oh, I have willpower to, not, to, to do this and do that. But um, when you have self-control, you have self-control in everything. And so that's really cool. It's really cool. And we will. We'll go into more of that and, and get to a chance to really digest it and, and really um, find out more about what God has to say about it. How many of us know you can't do any of that without God? None of it. Now, I love joy. Let's see. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. Does everybody, does everybody know the song? <laughs> I know Kids Point does. So um, uh, you just can't do it. Uh, but it starts with you. It doesn't start with God. God's not going to pull your ear and drag you around and make you do all these things. It starts with your choice and your decision to say, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get it done. I'm going to make the right choice. We choose. It's our choice whether or not we will fail, I'm sorry, fall into sin or not. You think? It's our choice. Because the difference is, is that when sin comes in front of us, and it tempts us, the first thing you should do is what? That's one thing. What's the thing that washes out the, wa uh, the, the sin? The Word of God. We run to the Word of God. Now we got it on our phone, we got it on our tablets. I mean, the, 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 words, the, the Word says that we, we ought to write it on the back of our hands, on our foreheads. <laughs> I mean, we ought to write it above our doorposts. We got, you know, wherever it is, just write that word down. Because he knows. He knows exactly what it takes to get us to the clean place where we need to be. He knows exactly what it takes to get us back on the right avenue and right on the back, right path so that we'll, be, we'll do the things that we need to get done. Um, Self-control is formed through knowledge of the word of God and the application of it and the digestion of it. Okay? Digestion. Digestion is spiritually speaking, uh, I'm sorry, spiritually speaking would, would be um, reading, meditation, and study of the word. We got to digest the word. We got to take it into our system. We can't just, it's almost like uh, having, having food around us, but we never eat it. It's like uh, chewing on it and then spitting it out. Because maybe it was too sour. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. I just don't have time to eat all of a sudden. I don't have time to eat, so let me spit it out. I got to go. In order to digest, well, how, how many times have, do you have to chew your food before you really get it to go down? <laughs> 38, something like that? 30 sometimes you have to chew on a mouthful of food in order. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> But we gotta digest the word of God. So we gotta chew on it for a little while. All right? So it takes meditation. Not no quick reading, not no quick little 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 excerpt and, and, and off we go. No, let's let's spend some time in there. Let's 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 really figure out what it is that God's trying to say to us and really begin to move forward in it. Okay? You must get to know God and grow in your confidence and faith in him, and to give you the self-control that you need to be victorious over every temptation that Satan brings your way. Amen. Let's look back at Galatians 5.21, the last part of it. 
I read it earlier. It says, of which I tell you beforehand. I'm sure this wasn't, it's not the first time I've told a group of life pointers this. And just I also told you in time past, you're going to keep hearing this until it digests. And guess what? You'll probably hear it for the next eight weeks at least. At least. Talking about love, talking about patience, talking about joy, talking about peace, talking about it, talking about it, talking about it, talking about it. So digest it. Digest it. Digest it. Use it. And let it be nourishment unto your body. Okay? It says, just as I told you before, that those who practice big word such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But I say to you that those that practice these such things will inherit the kingdom of God. If you practice these things, you will inherit the kingdom of God. But guess what? Big word. Big word. Which one was it? Come on. Say it for me. Oh, man, that's such enthusiasm. <laughs> I heard a few people say it all together for me. Oh, my. It's been a long day, huh? Okay. We got to practice. We got to practice. If we don't practice, <laughs> guess what? It's not going to sink in. It's not going to digest. And you will be hit with those things all the time, and you no, won't know what to do with it. You won't know how to react. You won't know how to, how to handle those situations. you got to learn how to handle those situations. I don't care how long we've been in the Word. I don't care how long we've studied. I don't care how long. I don't care what title you have in front of your name. And I'm talking about pastor. I don't care how good you are. I don't care how, 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 how successful you are, how much money you have. We all run into these same temptations. And we've got to practice walking in love, walking in the joy of God, walking in the peace of God. We've got to do it. If we don't do it, guess what? We're going to fall into the same mess. Same mess. Proverbs 4, 5 and 7 says, uh, this is your reading homework. I like homework. Reading homework, it's not long. Proverbs 4, 5 through 7. But I want you to meditate upon it. I want you to digest it. I want you to read it. I want you to study it. Okay? It says, in all our getting, we're going to get understanding. That's the gist of it. That's the gist of it. But you read the whole thing. And all I'm getting, we're going to get understanding. LifePoint Christian Faith Center is going to get understanding. Those that come into the house of God on a Sunday, on a Wednesday, are going to get understanding. You're not going to leave here, I don't know. No, you won't. We are going to embrace the word of God, meditate, and study to understand. Where I'm trying to get you is to that close, intimate fellowship and relationship that will transform your life. It will transform your life. You will never be the same again. When you feel a touch from God for the first time in your life, you will never want to go back to weak and beggarly things. You don't want to go back to the dry way of life. Amen. I, want, I want to jump with both feet in, get totally immersed, and just swim in the goodness of God. And, and that's the way we want you to become. It won't be the fear of hell that holds you into a church, but a true total love and knowledge of the Father that will cause you, come on, cause you to run into the church and stay in his presence outside the church. Because you're going to want to run in here and get more knowledge, more understanding, more wisdom, and, and, and a closer relationship with him with your praise and your worship and the prayer and all those things, but it's going to still be radiant, I mean radiating out of you when you leave this place and you're at work and when you're at home, when you have relationships with your children, with your, with your husband, with your, 
with your friends, with your coworkers, it's going to radiate out of you because of that close and intimate and uh, wonderful fellowship that we have with God. That's what we want. That's what we want. That's what we're going to get. In Jesus' name. I call it upon your life. I do. I do. I hope. Yeah. Praise God. Praise God. Well, next week we're going to have a, a special, a special uh, speaker. And his name is Kelsey Colbert. <laughs> you won't want to miss it. You won't want to miss it.